but we have two um, former software engineering instructors. Andy was also a web development instructor. So solid friends of NSS back to talk with you all today. I see a few of your former students out there. Um, without further ado, I will let you all take over and talk about Bash. Um, but thank you for coming back. Thank you for doing this. Um, you are much appreciated. All right, I will start off and at some point I'll let Charlie talk. I don't know, we got an hour, so he'll get a few minutes. Um, Thank you. Well, it's not, not yet, Charlie. Oh, okay, sorry. I. <laughs> all right, I do wanna say hello to everybody and and, and thank y'all for, uh, for agreeing to spend some of your valuable lunch time hanging out with us. I do recognize several faces in the, in the crowd, the virtual crowd. But for those of you who don't know me, as as, uh, as Kate said, I used to teach software engineering course, uh, taught web development for a long while before that. Um, and I will say, you know, teaching at NSS was has been the high point of my career. Uh, it's a it really is a special place. I know as we were sort of joking around, some of you might not feel that way until after you get the job or whatever. But uh, at some point you will, and some point. Hopefully very soon. Uh, other than NSS, I have you know about twenty five ish years of software development, sort of related experience. Some of that teaching, some of that doing management, some other things. That uh, these days, I'm actually working as an, an Azure cloud engineer. Uh, I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, I've been doing it for several months, but as soon as I do figure out what it means, I will come back and let y'all know. Charlie, you want to say hello? Hello. Like you like more, to say more than that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I worked with Andy uh, when we both worked at NSS. Uh, yeah. On the software engineering program. Um, I, I think I've got, I don't know. He, he said a big number, 25 ish years. And I, I guess I have to, I have to say the same, same thing, um, which makes us sound older than, than we feel. Or, you, know, you should not think of us as old, I guess is the point. Um, but yeah, the uh, I currently um, I'm at a, at a company called Trillient Health, um, working with um, Kotlin and lots of data. Um, yeah, doing doing things there. Um, I'm a I'm a big fan of of Bash and terminals and things that. We're going to talk about if I say too much more, I'm going to be giving away like Andy's Andy's lead. But I mean, it's in the title, so you probably expected that one that one to be here. But yeah, I'm 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 a big fan of NSS, so I'm I'm glad to glad to be here and see some familiar faces and some new ones. So yeah, Charlie, I I really need to remind you that you are a year older than me. Mm. So, so I'm even okay. No, forget that. Okay, and you know. I don't think we need to dig into it. Don't, we all know what that. Is. Don't shake my um, confidence right before I'm supposed to like start, Andy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I assume that at next year is the year I would come home. Um, I, so, so next year. So, I think I have the easy job. Maybe maybe Charlie will have the whole job. Uh, I'm just going to sort of facilitate, and Charlie's going to do the real demonstration, do the real work. Um, and I won't reiterate my jokes for because they bore me now. Uh, as we get started, though, right before we get started, um, I do think I do imagine that some of you are curious about this weird little door behind me. All right, so let's get started. Um, Charles, will you go ahead and share your screen? Yes, Andy. Thank you. I get points, I think, for however many times I can work that into a, uh, the, the thing. You do. You know, you okay. get all the points, man. Thank you. Now I have to, like, figure out how to make my Zoom window my full screen. There we go. All right. So in the description of the talk, we talked about uh, how we're going to be using data from Nashville's open data portal. Uh, and some of you may be familiar with that. Some of you may not be. Uh, it's basically a bunch of web APIs that the city of Nashville offers to sort of expose public data. 
Uh, and to be really fair or honest, it's, it's it could be better than it is. Uh, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit more promise than delivery, but it's okay. There's some interesting stuff. There's a lot of maps as Charlie's showing here. We're not going to do any map stuff because that's kind of outside the scope, but there's, there's some pretty cool stuff and it's definitely worth checking out. Um, if you're in Nashville, I guess if you're not, maybe, maybe you don't care as so much. But for the purposes of this talk, we really just needed a source of data and some files to download so that we could play with them in our shell. And so that's really the per that's why we're going to use open data as a convenient source of data. So the bash shell. So Charlie, what the heck is the bash shell? And if it's so great, why do we bash it? I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to tell that joke. That was terrible. It's just, man, gosh, yeah, you got to get a warning for doing these things. I apologize. To all. I actually wrote that down for God's sake. No, I'm not. Never mind. Keep, okay, Charlie, take over. What? What? Tell me about the bash shell. Bash shell. My goodness. Um, the bash, well, the, the, the bash shell, um, we won't do a whole history lesson, but a lot of these computer things, there's, there's long history lessons. Um, once upon a time, there was a thing called the Born shell um and uh then then uh, you know software developers sometimes are, are clever in their in their naming and so they made a better version of the born shell and they called it the born again shell and there's all sorts of funny little references there depending you know on on, on things but um it, it is so a shell right is kind of a way that we can interact with our operating system um and our computer and um it, it, it's super powerful it may be maybe a little scary but that I guess we're gonna we're gonna try to make it not scary, but it, it's super powerful. Um, yeah. Do lots of things. Somebody. Somebody maybe these. There we go. Okay. Cool. So yeah. a shell, like I know, so Charlie. Every time I I you know I think about what you're showing on the screen here, I really, I usually call that the terminal. Yeah. What can you talk about, like the difference between the shell and the terminal? What, what's going on there? Yeah, so so terminal is is an application. Um, I'm I'm using uh, so I'm on a Mac, as you might be able to tell from the glossy little bubbles uh, over here. But the um, so I'm using an application called called iTerm. Uh, the Mac comes with another application that maybe you, you've used more called Terminal um, on Windows. There's an application that you can install called Terminal. Um, or maybe you have um, just the command prompt. Um, <clears throat> so it's an application that that gets us, lets us use the shell, right? And, and the shell is is kind of the, kind of has a, a set of commands or a language, if you will. You know, like we're probably, we're learning Java or Python or, you know, .NET, different languages, JavaScript, um, the shell. Uh, gives us a a language, a way of kind of interacting with the the computer, with the operating system. I um, mean, the terminal is the way that we interact with that shell. So when you run the terminal, like the shell is just sort of in there. It's just yeah, it's just there. I know uh, I've been doing a lot of Windows work lately, and I've used uh, a tool called PowerShell a lot. Uh, and so, and that, you know, it, it says in the name, it says it's powerful and it kind of is, but why, uh, why bash? What's so, what's such a good thing about bash? So bash, uh, bash is kind of everywhere or it can be everywhere. Most, almost, almost everywhere. Um, so it's certainly, it, it's on a Mac. Um, it's on Linux. Um, if, uh, if you're on windows, um, a, a common thing to do, or at least a thing that we used in the software engineering program is uh, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Um, and if you install that, um, you have Bash. Uh, so it's very, um, yeah, kind of portable, I guess we might say, right? Like, if, you know, if, if I um, can become proficient using Bash, um, I can be almost as equally proficient on, on any type of computer, um, whether it's my my laptop right here, or if I'm working on a remote server, let's say I'm deploying an application to the cloud or to a server somewhere, um, Bash or a shell is also going to be there. And in fact, in that instance is, is probably going to be, might be the only way that I can interact with that computer. Um, 
Okay. So it's, 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 it's everywhere. So as we, before we sort of, uh, I actually get into typing some things, I do have one more question about bash. So like, Okay. A lot of I know a lot of people are using the Z shell these days. Yeah. Can you, can you why why Bash versus Z shell? What's going on there? Yeah. Um. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were going to expose me on, on this, but I'm actually using <laughs> Z shell here uh, in this Bash <laughs> demo. Um. But um. Yeah. So you know, as 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 the you know kind of the history of computing progresses, things things evolve and and change, and 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 a while back. Um. Apple um, decided, um, I think, because you know things were moving beyond Apple as well. But but actually, on a Mac now, uh, Z shell or Zish, we might say, um, is the default shell um, there on, on a Mac, mm -hmm. um, and and probably other. I think Linux distributions, it's becoming or is the default there um, for the purposes of what we're going to be doing today. Like we can think of them as like kind of working the same way. Like if you dig deep, there are in fact some differences between how Bash works and how Zish works. Um, but one of the things that's really great about Zish um, is, is that it's very compatible with Bash. So like I still kind of think about like, oh, I'm writing some Bash scripts. And, and maybe I am, but like a lot of times I'm just, I'm running those in, in Z shell and I'm not really thinking about the fact that it's a different shell. It's maybe an evolution of the bash shell in a way. Yeah. Yeah. A little more Z shell people would like, appreciate me saying that. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get down and, and actually do some stuff. Can you show us a few like examples of what you're, what you mean? Like we're talking about the power of this thing. What, yeah. What can we do? Wow. Well, like I, I, I I don't know if I can amaze you with like the first command uh, in, in the power, but you'll just have to have to trust us here as we build up to it. Um, so here I, I'm here in, in my my shell. Um, I can I, mean, I always like to know like I like to know maybe where am I um, so I can print working directory um, and kind of see what directory am I in my computer if I want to then see like well what what is there in in the terminal I can list or, or ls the the files that are there. Um, I can see I have a handful of um, directories here. Um, if I want to, uh, so we're going to be working through some things and I, I want to kind of do that maybe in a, in a certain spot to kind of keep things organized. So I see, I see right here, I have this, this directory called NSS. And so maybe I want a CD change directory into NSS. So I can say CD and, and give it the name. And, and, and if I just can double check again and print working directory and I can see that now I'm previously I was in my Charlie directory and now I've I've come into this NSS directory um so those are kind of some of the the, the basics of kind of navigating around the terminal you know, we can kind of think of this as you know if you're used to opening your you know your finder or your windows explorer you know and you're kind of navigating through and you're going into different folders um you do that exact same thing here in the terminal Imagine there are some folks in here who are doing this or remember doing this and like hadn't thought about it in a while or yeah. really realized what was going on there. So I think that's really good. One, one real quick, Charlie, you think maybe you could bump the font just a couple of couple is, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. I thought I had made, well, I, I didn't. Well, it might just be me, but you know. Let's see here. All right. I think that would get you. Better. How, how's that? Oops. That's great. Right. Good, good. Okay. Unless if, if anybody else has an issue, maybe holler in the chat. Yeah, please holler. All right, let's do it. So we're going to get some data from open data using the terminal. So we could, I guess, use the browser and like right click or whatever, do that kind of mess with a mouse. But what if we wanted to do it like the proper way with our fingers? Yeah. How would you get some data from open data? Well, I would, um, so kind of start looking around here and I, I filtered down, we were, we were mentioning earlier, there's lots of different types of data here. Uh, maps, I, I love maps, but uh, not super useful for what we're wanting to do here. So I, I've narrowed this down to data sets. Um, and maybe here's this first one here of the uh, the street sweeping schedule. And so I can look here, like Andy said, there's, you know, I could, I wanted to cheat here. I could just look at the data with my, with my mouse and, and my, my browser. But um, if I want to, I want to download, maybe uh, it looks like there's a way here I can, I can export um 
So maybe there's something I can I can do with this to to download download the data. Um, looks like I have a couple of a couple of different choices here. Um, Andy, do you have do you have thoughts on? on well, I mean, you know, I think a lot of people are doing downloading CSV. If you want to open something like that up in, in, a, in Excel or something like that would be useful if you want to look at it in a grid. So, but JSON is, is a friendly, is our, is, is our friendly way to maybe download things to do program, programming things with it. Right. Yeah. JSON. I'm a fan. I will add that um, what we're going to show here, like it, would work for other APIs as well if that didn't have such a fancy web interface. So like this this technique would work in a place where you wouldn't have, you might have fewer options even. So maybe you were gonna say that, Charlie, but I said it. Yeah. Save it, save. You saved, saved me from saying it, yeah. Okay, if I save, save us all. Yep. So, so it looks like right here, I've got this, uh, this API endpoint uh, with a, a very um, conveniently named and easy to remember name, the, you know, the P9 IQ. SXK3 is is what we all associate with street sweeping. Um, so I can I can copy that and um, and that we're we're, we're going to download it in, in the terminal. Is that what you said? Yeah, let's do it. So so before we do that, uh, like we I, I was kind of starting to you know I changed directories into this NSS thing. Um, I, I want to. I guess I could look and I mean, I've got, I think I've got other things here. Um, I'm going to go into this. I have this lunch and learn directory that I'm going to go into. Um, and maybe I'm going to do another command. I'm, I want to make a directory. I want to call it data. <laughs> so you might maybe have noticed in here, some of these commands, uh, as you use them for a while, uh, you know, we might say things like, oh, these are so like, uh, cleverly named, intuitively named, right? Like I'm going to make a directory. So there's a command called mkdir, right? Or I'm going to list and it's ls and we can kind of see how ls maybe kind of sounds a little bit like list. Um, if this is the first time you're seeing it. You're like, that's not intuitive at all. Like these are just random <laughs> letters. Um, so it's kind of like, as you use it more, right? Like we're talking about kind of the power of things that we can do. Um, even if it still seems a little confusing right now, maybe you can see that, you know, with time using it, how, how things can kind of become um, easier to do. Um, so I'm going to, again, change directory into this data uh, dir uh, directory that I've created. And, okay, so I have this, uh, I copied this file right here. And I'm going to use a command called curl is how we're going to be able to kind of interact with this uh, API, curl. I'm going to type it correctly. Um, and I think I'm just going to hit enter and see what happens. Oh, did you say you're going to type it correctly? Did you really say that? Correct. Oh, wow. See that? Oh, see? That's... I, I just, I just, I just missed that, but yeah. I did, I did it correctly. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm just going to hit enter and see what happens here. Well, there's, there's some data, looks like. Um, I don't know that this is super useful to me, Andy. I didn't look that useful. No. Yeah. Can we make it more useful? So what I, what I actually want to do is I want to save this into a file. That's why I created this data directory. So um, right now you didn't, right? What is it just, it's just on the screen. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I can scroll up. I can look at it all. I'm scrolling. So that's, you know, so interesting, you, but like, that's not, uh, there's too much data here really for me to, I don't know, to, to decide anything, to, to figure anything out about how many, how many miles the street sweepers are driving or maybe to find my street if I lived in Nashville. Um, yeah, so I want to get it into a, a, a file and then I can then I can maybe do some other things with it. Um, I might want to wonder, might want to wonder, that's not how you would say it. I might wonder, I might want to know, I might wonder and then want to know, like what else can I do with this thing called curl? Um, for almost any command, 
that we can uh, use in our in our shell, uh, we can look it up in the manual. I'm, I'm saying it specifically that way because then when I tell you we run the man command, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. The, the, the manual uh, is how I can look up and see kind of instructions on how to how to use um, different different commands, right? And so I can kind of look through here um, if I want to do so output. Oh, look, maybe look, ah. um, <laughs> how are you now? Oh, now? Look at that. Look at that. If not told otherwise, curl writes the received data to standard out. What that means is exactly what we just saw. It did not save it to a file. It just spit it out there. Charlie, right, can um, you use your mouse to scroll up and down in there? How are you doing that? Oh, good question. Actually, I, I <laughs> Actually, I think maybe I can use my mouse, but I'm not supposed to be able to use my mouse. <laughs> I, I am using. Not everyone can. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I am using a, a couple of things. I can use my up and down arrows. Um, I can use the space bar to kind of page down. So I'm hitting space bar right there to, to page down. I can um, use control characters. So if I press the control key, and forward F, I can say control F for forward. I can say control B for backward. Um, if I just kind of arrow down a little bit. Yeah, so this is kind of this weird, this is, and, and the way that I can tell that something different has happened is right down here at the bottom, I've got this little, little colon and, and the cursor here. Um, if I hit Q to quit, um, it, it takes me right back to my, my terminal where I was at. I go back, I'm going to go back now. I'm just paging down and then arrowing up here. Okay, this is, I think, what I was wanting to find here, right? So it, we can instruct curl to save the data to a local file using one of these options. So we're going to use, we're going to use this one, this dash O or dash dash output. Um, so here's a very common convention you'll see working with the uh, um, arguments. So these, these are arguments we're going to give to the, the curl command. Uh, it's very common that there will be a short version and a long version. Here we have the short version, it's just dash O, and we have the long version, dash dash output. They're both going to work the same way, but kind of depending, I guess, how much we'd like to type, um, or really kind of how uh, kind of verbose we want to be in kind of explaining what's happening. So I'm going to use the dash O command. Uh, hit up arrow a few times and this was the command that i ran that just spit it all out or as the man page told us so printing that to standard out i'm going to add a dash o what if this is the street sweeping i'm going to give it a name there again and there now i don't see it to the terminal i i, I see some kind of output from curl Take another, I'm going to ls. There we go. I have I have that file now. I did it. Awesome. So now we have a file. I guess we could look at that file somehow. I yep. mean, I know we could open it up in our editor maybe, but what if we just wanted to get like quick and dirty look at it? Take a look. Yeah. So there's there's a couple of couple of things. Um, if I really enjoyed that experience of having uh curl, just dump it all to the, the terminal. Um, I can use a command called cat um, in the name of the file. And I'll, I mean, I didn't actually enjoy that experience of curl dumping it out, but may, maybe you did. So we'll, we'll, we'll run it again. Right. And we just, there's the whole file. Right. Um, so that was not, that was not super useful. Um, if I just kind of want to maybe just see a little bit, right. Um, I can run a command called clear here to kind of clear things out. Um, I can I can run a command called head. Um, that's just going to look at, at the head of the file, that kind of the top part of the file. So that might be a little bit more manageable, it, and it is. It, it it fits on fits on one screen there. Um, the other thing, and, and and kind of where I would I would naturally go, I think, is to use a command called less. 
in the name of that file. And as soon as I hit enter here, we're gonna see that we're like we're 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 back. This looks very similar to what we were looking at with that that man page. And in, in fact, is using the exact same kind of mechanism here. So I can spacebar to page down, control F to go forward, control B to go backward, or my arrows, you know, to go go up and down. Um, and then again, if I'm done looking at the file, then I can hit Q to quit. The nice thing about this, why this is kind of one of my, my the, I think the preferred way I would do this is this is not kind of jammed a bunch of stuff out into my my terminal, like a cat and head has have done, right? So it's, I can just kind of look at it and then pop back quickly without having to jam a bunch of things up there. Right, it's pretty cool that you can read the data and look at it and everything, but you know, this data is is JSON, which is kind of a, a language or a structure that's pretty friendly yep. to uh to program, right? To write code with. So do I need to like bust out some Python code or Java code or Erlang or something to do that to, to actually wow. read this data and pick it apart? Yeah, Erlang. We could, yeah. I mean, we we could we could pick all kinds of languages. Um I mean, if you're willing to do Erlang right now, we could totally switch gears. <laughs> I, 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 I am not ready to do Erlang. I'll cover up this part of my shirt again. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. So, so since this, the point of this is is Bash or or Z shell, as, as we've already admitted. Um, what what I want to use here is is a little command line a utility called JQ that um, will let me. Uh, kind of interact with this JSON data without having to go write Python or write write a bunch of uh, even Erlang, right? Um, JQ. So JQ is a, uh, a, a, I'm going to pretend like I'm not reading the website to you, but it is a, a lightweight and flexible command line JSON processor. Um, basically, that lets us um, you know, we're kind of in this mode of of being able to just kind of explore things in, in our terminal. And maybe I'm trying to figure out, maybe I do want to write a program in Python or Erlang uh, to to really, you know, do a lot of amazing stuff with this street sweeping data. Um, but but right now I'm still just kind of exploring, right? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's there. And so um, I just kind of want to look around. So um, if I... I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cat the whole file again just for the the sake of, of the demo here. Uh, so what, one of the neat things about the shell, so we can combine different commands that we run. The way that we can combine them is with this little little symbol right here. This is called the the pipe symbol um, on your on your keyboard. It's it's probably on, on the, the same key as your backslash key. Um, and so, so what this means, right, is to say, I'm, I'm gonna cat this file, right, which we've seen what that does, right? That's just gonna dump the whole file out. But what we're saying is instead of just dumping it out to the terminal, I want you to send it to this program called JQ. And, and so this, this idea of being able to, to take output from one program so we're running a program here. We don't really think of, I don't think about it necessarily this way, but when I type cat street sweeping schedule, I'm actually running the cat program and it's sending me some output. And with this little pipe symbol, I can say, actually, I want to take that output. I want to send it to another program that's going to do something else. And so that's part of that, really that power that we kind of keep saying and talking about with, with the shell um, is this ability to, Kind of chain multiple things together. Um, so if I just hit enter, we'll just see what I'm just sending this to JQ. Wow. And it still just spit it all out there, but I have to say this looks looks a lot nicer. I can actually kind of see these different fields in this in each uh, each record. It's much bigger, right? Now, Charlie, what what if uh, what if somebody typed that command that you just entered and they didn't find it and they got some kind of error? Maybe, like, can I just run JQ out without doing anything? On anything. Well, let, let's take a look at let's uh, um, let's go back to my my head command. 
and you'll notice that the, the terminal just kind of does this weird thing when I when I type that pipe symbol, it's backing it up a space. It it, it, it works either way. Don't we don't need to? It's a little more readable if we have the space there. But so if I uh, let's try this right. So head we'll remember is just we're just looking at the first. Um, I think it's ten lines by default of of that file. If I run that through, pipe that through JQ now. Oh, is this, is this what you're going for? I got an error. You broke my computer, Andy. Oh, no. Yeah. Why? Why might that be? Um, if I take off JQ, let me see. Does Did, did head break? No, head, head still works. Um, what JQ is expecting is is a complete json object um and if you i don't know how familiar where people i know we you know we cover that in uh we, you know, we work with json and software engineering um i'm assuming other programs probably do it at some point yeah, as well I but I don't know, does anybody see an obvious thing here looking at this this little snippet of what we've looked at that maybe is this a complete JSON object, JSON representation. You don't have your closing square bracket. Yeah. So, so what this data file actually is, so the square bracket indicates what? What do, do we remember what that is? Data type. An array? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah I see a hand there. Is that, is that what uh, the hand was going to say? Go ahead. Yeah. Is it an object in this case? Well, yes. So the, um, I was even hesitating to say object because kind of the whole thing is kind of the, like a JSON object, but the, it, the square bracket here, yes. How, how in JSON we look at lists or arrays, right? So what this file is, is actually a list of all of these different entries of street sweeping schedules. Um, and when we've just looked at the the very top of the file, we can see here we we've got this the start of a, of a list. But if we if we come back uh, and let's look at this street sweeping thing again, I'm going to use less. One of the things I can do in less is I can jump all the way to the end of the file, and I see here at the end of the file there's my my close closing bracket. So I know. This whole file is is a list of all of these these things, right? And I can if I if I look at here's this one line, right? And, and so when I when I uh, use that head command, I, I I just kind of like I, I missed the fact that there was a list at the end of this. And JQ then is like you I don't know what to do with this. This is not valid uh, JSON, right? As we see here. Charlie, I was I was wondering about JQ as uh, as something that you might need to install. Mm. You probably do. Probably so all do. these other commands that you've used so far are just sort of yep. built into, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so Bash or Zeesh, right? Come comes with um in just your your operating system, right? Comes with really an impressive array of uh of, of programs commands utilities um but jq is is currently not one of those things that that's um uh, installed by default um probably on on most most operating systems um so yes yeah, so, so if we're going to use it like we need to install it um uh, so this is the we'll um this doesn't really talk about it here, but I, th I think we're going to share a thing at the end of this. So we'll have some some resources. One of those resources will be will be this. Um, yeah, I'm always I mean, kind it of might be, it might be a little bit beyond what we can do, have time for, but yeah, I yeah, I, I think it kind of depends how you're uh, like if you're using. I'll, I'll just say quickly if you're using Homebrew, if you know what that is. We can brew install it. Um, that should work on Mac. Well, that, that would work on Mac. Um, if you're on um, a, a Linux or using WSL, um, you can probably get it from your package manager as well. 
Um, I, I'm always, I'm a little reluctant kind of in general to like pull down tools that, um, you know, then if I really like, I have to in, kind of install anywhere I want to use it. But, but JQ is, it, it's pretty powerful. It, it's pretty worth um, installing, um, particularly if you're working with JSON data much, right? Which if you're building web applications at all, if you're working with REST APIs, it's a very common thing. So it's, it's a really, it, it's worth kind of the extra install, I think. All right. Sorry. I got distracted. Sometimes. Yeah. See, this is, I mean, we told them we didn't practice. So every now and then you see these little things and we're like, yeah, we, <laughs> who's, who's yeah. on first? Well, I don't want to, I don't want to start doing that routine just yet. I have to. Uh, sorry. Sorry. No. Too soon. Um, so we've looked at, we've looked at the, some of the data. We've seen it. We've formatted it a little bit. Uh, we've looked at sort of the structure of it and we use JQ to get a better feel so we could kind of more easily see the the kinds of data that we have, the columns in there. Maybe maybe you could show that again, if you don't mind, just sort of like sh just output the, the data in JQ just to see that format. Because we can yeah. see that. Yeah, go ahead and run that, please. Yes. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to do one one more thing okay. here, right? Just to make this a little bit easier to, to look at because I, I don't really like looking at all how many records are in here um and this is getting like there, there's probably a whole separate uh lunch and learn on on jq and, and how to use it um that we're we're not going to get into today so for the most part i'm i'm just going to kind of use some things from jq um say well what this is letting me do is just look at the first record um in in this file um and because we're software people, we like to start counting at zero. So I'm using zero to look at the first record there, right? So here's an idea I can just see right here. This is what all of the, the records look like. So that little, that thing to the right of JQ there, that's some like other command that you're passing in. What, what does that mean? Yeah. So these are, these are the, this is the argument that I'm giving to the JQ program, right? So the argument that I'm giving to the cat program is the name of the file. So I'm saying send all of that output into JQ. And then I'm telling JQ, do some things here, right? I don't want to look at everything. I just want to look at the first record. Um, and, and again, this is probably very unsatisfying to hear, but I'm, we're going to kind of hand wave uh, for, for a bit past why that's working with JQ. And there is, I'll just say, like, I think that the JQ has, you know, pretty good documentation. It's almost like it's almost like a whole other language that you can put in there between those single quotes that you're passing there on the on the right, right? Yep. You can do some kind. I think you might be doing some more complex stuff here in a minute too. But, but um, yeah, that well, is a lot. Depends what you ask me. Every time I will, I guess I'll say this. I'll I'll remove. I'll step away from my interviewer position and say every time I have to do something more than a little bit complex, I have to go look it up again. So it's one of those things that doesn't st stay in my head very well. So let's see, we, we have this, we know this is street sweeping data. So mm -hmm. I have an idea of a street. Okay. Many, many folks here probably have never been to the actual building where NSS is located, uh, but there is one. Uh, it's on Plus Park Boulevard. So it's, it's not really a very exciting street, but mm -hmm. NSS is there and, and you know, maybe somebody wants to get there and want, wants a clean street, Charlie. So when, when is uh, Plus Park Boulevard going to be swept? Plus Park Boulevard. So, um, so a couple of thoughts. Uh, like I want to search through this file to see if I can find uh, a, a street called uh, Plus Park Boulevard. Um, and and one of the one of the tools that I can I can use to do that um, is 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 a command called grep. And grep stands for something. But it, I I can't tell you it's like an intuitive thing like I told you the maker and all that like it's just it's grep uh, I think it's regular expression parser or something it's not important grep grep is how we can search through things um, so so one of the ways I, I guess for the purposes of sticking with this idea of piping different commands together um, I, I'm gonna again I'm gonna I'm gonna cat the whole file but I don't want to see the whole file I want I want to filter that down I want to search for things right so I'm gonna I'm going to type in here grep, and so this is going to search then for for something that I that I give it right, um, and, and so I think Andy said it was plus 
uh, Park Boulevard. Um, and I'm, I'm going to assume that Andy's speaking in an official U.S. postal regulation form here and, and that what he means is, is Boulevard, you know, just the abbreviation for uh, for Boulevard. Um, and so if if that street shows up here in this data, um, then I'll then I'll see something here. And it, it, it doesn't. Um, what I might wonder to myself, if I, I conveniently uh, left here this this sample data up here, uh, what, what, what is, is somebody notice anything about kind of how I've typed the name of this street versus maybe how the names of the streets are typed um, in, in the file? Anything kind of obvious stand out to anybody? Okay. Are you sensitive? Yeah, yeah. We kind of, kind of said the same thing two different ways. Yeah, all caps is, is so there's a case sensitivity thing going on here. Uh, one of the things that's maybe a little bit annoying about computers when you first start working with them is that they're, man, they're so exacting and so so literal. And and, and it turns out that like capital letters aren't considered the same things as as lowercase letters. Um, and so what I need to do is I I. I so, so I could, I could do one of, I could do a couple of things. I could say, well, let's, I assume park, let's just test that theory, right? Let's see if plus park is all caps. And look at that. I got something and uh, grep maybe hopefully highlighted that for me. Um, there's another thing that I could do. Let's say I just, I really like, Let's say I'm offended by all caps and I just, I really like typing things appropriately. Um, there's, a, I can tell grep and this is, I think somebody, somebody said this there, they're talking about kind of the case insensitivity or the case sensitivity. I can tell grep, like I know that capital plus park Boulevard is different than lowercase plus park Boulevard or kind of sentence casing or camel casing, whatever we're calling this. But I want you to ignore that. Um, and so the dash I, I happen to know, right. And again, if, if I, if I didn't know this, I could go look at the man page, the manual, and I could look through grep and, and see some options. And so now I see, okay, cool. Now I can, you know, I can just type, type that in and, uh, I, I get the same set of results back, um, as I got before. So, so I do know that I can, I could also just for the sake of, uh, um, Kind of completeness here i could type you know using that insensitive uh matching operator that i can type these the casing of these things any any which way um and and it's gotten me something so so that's kind of the you know we're we're here in the in the bash kind of kind of world right like that that's kind of maybe a first kind of place to to look um i really do like being able to see these things in uh, like i like the way that you know, JQ formats those things. Um, but again, here, we're back to this, uh, this JSON parsing error. Um, similar to what we, we saw before. Now, in this case, it's, it, it's not the list thing isn't, isn't biting us because, because I only have one record. I don't have the, the leading square bracket. Um, but let me see maybe what, um, what, what the problem is the problem with with trying to to treat one of you know these things as a it starts know, with a comma at the moment yeah so it's kind of like the, the whole data if i remember as, as we looked like it is a list of things and i've just kind of grabbed two pieces out of it it's like well this, these are kind of formatted to, as if they belong in a list um so, so that's that's kind of annoying um there is there is a way that we could um we, we could look at this we could do this same kind of search the same grep we, we could ask jq to do that um and again um i, I feel bad doing this but i'm gonna do it just because uh, and i am uh, uh Lest you think that I am thinking worse of Andy for his moment of transparency there, saying he has to just look things up when he wants to do things in JQ. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell you that I've I, just, I looked this stuff up all the other day, so I'm I, same thing. 
And so now I have things ready to go here, uh, almost. Let's see if this, let me see if I did it. And then, and then I'll explain, I'll explain a little bit. Look at that. Okay, good, 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 good. So one of the things I saw earlier, right? So when we looked at this data, I can see these different name, these field names, right? In, in the JSON, in each JSON record. Um, and so, and again, uh, without getting into the kind of how JQ is doing all of this, right? We can kind of in, intuit maybe a little bit that I'm selecting the this field called street to be swept. And JQ has has the same idea of pipes, right? To be able to kind of pipe output uh, to, to different functions in this case. And I've said, hey, I want to match Plus Park Boulevard. Um, and, and again, uh, similar to how we had to tell grep to ignore the case, I've, I've told JQ to also ignore the case. Um, and, and so this way here, I, I can see here's, here's the details for Plus Park Boulevard. Uh, looks like, well, we missed it. I gotta figure that out, right? Yeah. We, oh, it's already happened. Oh. It already happened. Yeah. Turn I'm afraid I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to speed things along yeah. just, or skip a couple of things. Yep. I would like to see you show off your beautiful bash scripting skills. Mm. Uh, because what if I had a bunch of files that I wanted to download using curl? Yeah. I didn't want to just do it one at a time because I'm a programmer. And by definition, as a programmer, I am a lazy person. Yeah. So how would I do that? There's 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 different ways you could do it. Uh, what what I would do, I think, is I would um, I would I would start by creating a file that has all of the things that I want to download. So let's see, we'll do that. We'll, we'll come right here. We'll do this right here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna um, use everybody's favorite editor on files. Now what, what is, is yet another lunch and learn, possibly, yeah. possibly several years of lunch and learns. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, and let's see, I, I'm gonna go back to, this was the, the um, it's my street sweeping schedule. And let me find, Maybe just find one, one or two others here real quick. Uh, whoops, wait, where, where do we go? Yeah. Uh, yep, it's a new search experience. And we'll take some cookies. What happened, Andy? I'm on a totally different website. How about, how about I share a link with you in Slack? Yeah, you got, you got something? Yeah, I'll just share it with you in Slack. Okay. That one is for special event permits. Okay. And we have another one here. That got I, one more. I'll give you uh, this one is for uh, that one is for the recycling center drop off. And then we'll do one more. And we'll do uh, soil conservation data. I don't know what that means. So, okay. Uh, there's just some data files. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do a little thing. I'm gonna say this is street sweeping. Uh huh. Uh, what'd you say this next one was? The this next one is parks uh, special events. Okay. And then recycle center. Recycling, and then what was the last one? Uh, soil. Soil. Okay. All right. Go. That's good enough. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you I've got these. Your own file there, right? You just I, did I, it. I, and you I just did it. Use VS Code for that, not Vim. It's true. Yeah. So we could we could look at VS Code here. If we I'm wanted to do that right now, but I'm just letting you know. I just I don't want to say everybody. Yep. Don't have to use Vim in order to follow along. You could. That's true. That's true. Or any other text editor that you find. Here. Yep. Um, okay. So so if I was going to, uh, I want to look at these these files, right? Um, we we talked about. This is kind of a, a programming language, right? Programming languages, we have ways to to do loops and to set variables and and, and do things, right? Um, and so, a thing like I, this is this type of thing is actually something that that I do fairly frequently working in the terminal. Um, so I'm just going to kind of write some code here on, on one line, right? So I'm going to say four, and I'm going I'm going to oh, file name. I'm just going to kind of do this here. And while he's typing that, I'll I'll just I'll reiterate like 
this is really cool what he's doing. We're trying to show you the power of this. This is certainly like this language that he's using is the weirdest language I've ever used in my life. <laughs> and I've used quite a few. Um, and some of them are weird, but it's super powerful and it's well worth the, sig the significant pain that you will experience to actually to learn it. Uh, and once again, it's the kind of thing that I do a lot. Uh, I have to look up a lot when I do it as well. So, and there are ways to write this on more than one line, just in the interest of time. He's just going to, and Charlie just types it all out like this anyway, but it, I would probably write on more than one line because I'd make a mistake and I need to go fix it. Okay. So, so what I've done to kind of like, kind of build, build my way up to this, right. Um, in, in bash, right. Or, or Z shell. So this little dollar parenthesis thing here is, is a way to say, go run this other command. All right. So I have this file that has my, my data files in there. Um, and so I want to do so FF is just kind of my default variable name, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll say for, for, I want to do something with every line that's in that file. And so cat, we've seen that a few times. We know that that prints out all of the, the files. And I'll say, all right, well, for each one of those lines, I want to do a thing. And so here's where I start writing my little program, right? And I say, well, I, my file name is the first part of that uh, in that data file, right? We saw a street sweeping, comma. So here's a kind of a CSV that we're doing, right? And here again, I'm, I'm using this, I, mean, I wanna run another program in the middle of all of this. And so echo is kind of like print. I'm gonna print that file name. And I use a command here um, called cut, which is real quick, we're kind of, I'm slicing this thing up, right? And I'm delimiting on the comma. And I'm saying I want the, the first field for the file name and the second field for the uh, for the URL. And so I'm starting out just by like, I just kind of like to print it out and see like, do I have, do I have the right stuff? And this looks, this looks pretty good, right? So now I can uh, come back and I can say, well, now I want to, I want to curl, right? So I'm going to go back to the thing that we did, right? And I have, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a thing here. File name is the, the variable that I've created. So say I might want to download each of these files and I want to save it into something. And so now if we remember way back when we first downloaded that thing, right? We, we typed curl, we gave it an output name and then we we pasted that, that URL. And so what this should do is this should now go download each one of those files to the file name that we have in that file. So let's see. Fortunately, they're small, so that ran quickly. Now they're all there. Fair enough, there they all are. And I could cheat and look at them in my, my VS code. Um, or I could continue writing more bash one-liners to, uh, to interact with them. So I think <laughs> like that is super cool. If, if I mean, I, we're all nerds here. So yes, we all agree that that's super cool. Um, that is one of those things that command you have in the in the document that you were talking about sharing is that right charlie yeah yep yes yep. so any so other people you can take that and like spend a little time um deciphering it or decoding it a little bit as well yep it is sort you know we got we got we had a little bit more fun too much fun charlie we were almost run out of time almost almost well haven't yet well, so i, I want to uh just say that there's even more stuff in that document that Charlie's going to share that you can go through. Um, you're you're going to be ready to, when, you, do you have a sense of when you'll be ready to share that, Charlie? I should have that here this afternoon. We can get that over to Kate. To... Kate can share that with everybody. We're, we'll make, we'll, we'll tell her that she can at least. Um, hopefully that's true. Uh, she's She knows all y'all. So as we wrap up, we're going to need to wrap up just for the sake of time. Does, does anybody have any, uh, any, Quick questions. I've answered a few on the chat as we've gone through. No. Would something bad happen if you didn't have done there after that uh, command? Yeah. Great yeah. Question. Let's see it. <laughs> oh no! See now. <laughs> so we, we we could argue that like how bad this is. It certainly isn't what we expected. Um, 
what what is actually happening here is 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 bash or or z shell and this guy's being like okay like you started writing a for loop but like you're still writing it it's not done yet give me some more right mm -hmm. um so maybe i you know i don't know uh and do some more things right but at some point it's like i need a done command right and so if i finally give it that it's going to download them again sure enough right there i can see my little extra hello that i that i added in there and that's just the that's one of those keywords in the in the bash script language the, the language that that he's writing it and that's a for loop like you've used in your other languages before that does all kinds of craziness but it is just a for loop so you're looping over the the, the items in that file and then you eventually you get to be done I'll leave it as an exercise for you all to figure out what the, the closing keyword for an if statement is. And even more fun is the closing one for a case statement. All right, this is great. Yeah, I, I would think of all this kind of like what everything we're doing here is just kind of like, you know, like wedding, wedding an appetite, hopefully for like the types of things that, that, that you can do and, um, yeah. And you can, Charlie, like, like if you want, if I wanted to like rerun this later, I could save this in a script file, right? I could, yes. Yep. So I don't have to type that out every time I want to download these files. I could save that somewhere and then run it, make it a mm -hmm. re reproducible sort of script. Yep. Maybe that's the next one somewhere. We'll see. Uh, yeah. That yeah. or Erlang. Well, well, we need to practice for that one probably. Yeah, me too. I didn't read Erlang all the time. Well, we're, I think we're right at our time. We're over our time. We're late. We weren't late. We're late. We, Several we, people we, have abandoned us, even like well, Kate didn't. <clears throat> Not at all. Thank you both so much. I did hear the thing about multiple future lunch and learns. So you be did prepared you? for me to reach out to get those on the calendar. Here I thought you would have left. <laughs>